All right, let me ask you something. You ever feel like you're eating like a slovenly imp? Has that thought ever crossed your godforsaken mind? Well, that stops today, my friend, because today's video is brought to you by Factor. Factor sends fresh, never frozen, ready meals right to your doorstep. How convenient! No prep, no mess, no stress. Factor completely takes the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Are you on a keto kick? Maybe a low calorie swing? Perhaps a vegan or vegetarian regimen? Factor's got all that, baby. You see this guy? This is a sad guy I made in Blender. He's sad. You don't want to be like that guy. And this is how you avoid being that guy. And hey, listen, if you're like me, you've abused takeout once or twice. And this is a genuinely great way to avoid that trap. Healthy, great tasting, quick to prepare food is a lifesaver compared to the desperate 3 a.m. churro chicken sandwich you're getting from Sammy Wham's Chicken Coliseum or wherever the hell you get your garbage from. You know, most fitness experts will tell you, fitness is 70% diet, 30% exercise. So with Factor's dietitian approved ingredients, you can rest easy knowing that the lion's share of fitness lies with them. Definitely go running though, because a lot of yous, no lie, looking a little flabs. You know, you're looking a little, uh, how do you, how you say, uh, bubbly, I guess? Jolly? So what are you waiting for? Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGCHRIS130 to get $130 off across six boxes, bro. So with that out of the way, let's go on with the show! Oh, hey, sorry guys. I died of a broken heart, so it took me a while to respawn. So some of you might remember that last year, I promised to make a Halo Infinite review. I promised to make a video about Halo Infinite, basically assessing what I thought of the game uh, as it was. And uh, understandably since then, I've been getting a lot of questions like, you know, hey, Chris, where's the video? You said you were gonna review it, where is it? Now, I've never actually responded to those questions because my answer is an annoying one. My answer is that I'm still waiting for Halo Infinite to come out. Because as far as I'm concerned, from where I'm sitting, this is an early access video game. Hey, future Chris from the editing bay here. So since I actually sat down to record this video, a lot has happened with Halo Infinite. There has been a new event called The Yappening that's pretty decent. They did an entire Forge showcase. And one of the heads at 343 Industry, Bonnie Ross, actually left the company. I don't think the point of this video changes with any of these events. I just wanted you to know in case you were wondering why I didn't bring them up. So yeah, back to it. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I am saying that to be as kind as is humanly possible. As much as it pains me to say this, I kind of hate talking about Halo Infinite for a, for a variety of reasons. The main one being that this feels like an absolute paradox of a video game. You have masterpieces like Shadow of the Colossus. You have abject failures like Anthem. Charming distractions like Destroy All Humans. And entirely forgettable deviations like the amusingly titled Remember Me. It's an oversimplification, of course, but generally speaking, I feel like most video games fit pretty neatly onto this spectrum. Yakuza Like a Dragon, let's put you over there. Oh, Mass Effect Andromeda? But now I've invested you, Morda, and Clan Nakmore will pay with blood. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Mm, you're gonna go over on this side a little bit. I don't need to describe this to you. You're a smart one. You're subscribed to me. At least you better be. Halo Infinite is frustrating to talk about because it exists on that spectrum in two completely opposite places. On one hand, it is some of the most fun that I have ever had with a multiplayer FPS ever. And on the other, it is the most incompetently handled live service title I have ever seen. The point of Halo Infinite being a free-to-play live service title, as I understand it, was to conform to the generally agreed upon corporate consensus that players demand too much content too regularly to do things the old way. We can't just put out a game with tons of great community features and fantastic base gameplay. We need a battle pass and new microscopic content drips all the time just to keep players invested. If that really is the 
case. If the point of making Halo Infinite a live service title was to keep the game updated frequently enough to compete in a modern capacity, then why is Halo Infinite worse at delivering new content than old Halo games that weren't even live services? In the time it took Halo Infinite to get two new multiplayer maps, Halo 3 had six new maps and two new Forge canvases to play around with. And Halo Infinite doesn't even have Forge yet. Oh, but Chris, Forge is on the way. And it's the most impressive version of Forge that we've ever seen. It's so incredibly flexible and powerful, and it's awe-inspiring. Yeah, I agree. Forge in Infinite does look incredible. I would dare to say it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen come out of a console game. But what good are those tool sets? What good is that flexibility? What good are all of the fantastic custom multiplayer maps that I or my friends could make if custom games still doesn't work? Yeah, Max will go. No friendly spawn available? What? It's telling me no friendly spawn available. They haven't even talked about this yet. They've been really transparent about how like, you know, guys, we're sorry. The game isn't where we want it to yeah. be. Two seasons a year doesn't cut it. It's just not going to cut it. That's not what our players deserve. It's not what they expect. But they have never mentioned custom games being just completely dead on arrival, like unusable. They've not mentioned this. How? Forge does look amazing but I want to be able to reliably play on the things that are going to be made in it. Halo Infinite is like driving a car that handles like a dream. It's the best feeling car you've ever driven. It turns on a dime, it accelerates zero to 60 in a fraction of a second. It's wonderful. It feels like an extension of your body. But uh, the AC doesn't work. Uh, the seats are made of jagged metal. The back seats, um, those aren't in the car yet, but they'll be in the car sometime later next year. The windshield wiper fluid is black sludge and it permanently stains your windshield. And the radio only plays radioactive by Imagine Dragons, on loop, forever. At that point, it doesn't matter how good the car feels, because I'd rather just drive a reliably decent Toyota Corolla. Yes, the core gameplay is very, very good. I don't know how they did it, but 343 managed to create the most satisfying grappling hook I have ever used in any video game, period. And you know what? Praise be unto you. I'll hand you your roses for that. But again, what good is that good gameplay? when social players are being alienated by the most strict skill-based matchmaking systems I've ever seen implemented in anything, when desync is ruining the fabric of competitive play, when custom games and theater mode are still completely broken to the point of being unusable, when co-op campaign still isn't in the game nine months after launch, and when split-screen co-op has been just randomly canceled even after you've promised it for months, even though players have since been able to glitch into that split-screen co-op campaign mode that you have canceled? What the f- what is going on? What the fuck is happening? How is it that 343 Industries can nail the gameplay so hard? The part that requires the most technical expertise, the most talent, and the most finesse, and fumble the simplest parts of the experience. I, I, am, I am just so consistently baffled with this studio. I, I, it feels like a fever dream every time I log into this game and it's just, it's not, that's not a fun feeling. I'm, let me ask you a question real quick. Uh, let's say you're playing a multiplayer FPS and you click on a playlist called Team Snipers. What weapons do you expect to be using when you enter a game in the Team Snipers playlist? Now, I'm not a game designer, okay? I didn't go to school for this shit. I don't know programming. Maya, 3D Studio Max, Blender, what the fuck is all that shit? I'm just your average, regular guy. But I'm willing to bet that when you clicked on Team Snipers, you probably wanted to use a sniper. Am I correct? Of course I am. But no, apparently not, because 343 says, fuck you. Have this incredibly slow to reload anti-vehicle spike bazooka instead. I, I played Team Snipers for six hours one night and I shit you not, not once in those six hours did I even see a sniper rifle on my fucking screen. I ask you, how do you get that wrong? How is it possible? You know what it's like? It's like, do you remember those block blister uh, shorts from the fucking Amanda show? <laughs> I thought 
thought you said team diapers. And look, this, these are the kinds of things, these are the kinds of things that have me more disappointed in 343 than I am in Microsoft. Because yes, no doubt, Microsoft is probably responsible for forcing 343 to push the game out the door before it was actually ready. No doubt it's Microsoft's responsibility that 343 doesn't have the resources to allocate to all of these problems that really need to be fixed. Microsoft is the biggest company in the fucking world. They should be throwing money constantly at this game and at this studio to fix whatever the fuck the studio needs. And you know what? I'm even fully willing to believe that Microsoft is responsible for making this game a live service free-to-play game in the first place. That's all well and good. Microsoft needs to be held accountable for that. But how do you as a game developer not know that when I click on Team Snipers, I want to use a sniper? That's not a publisher decision. That is a dev decision, and it's baffling. And I know it seems minor, like, oh, big deal, the playlist isn't, like, what it says it is. I don't know how that's minor to anybody, but Jesus Christ. It's small in the grand scheme of things, but these little things in the face of everything else that's wrong with the game really add up to make, it, it contributes to this feeling that 343 can't do anything right outside of the core gameplay. And it's confusing because even I could have told you how to fix these things. Even I could have told you that when you launched your fucking free-to-play new Halo game, a, a game that millions of people were looking forward to, millions of people were bound, destined to check out. You don't release your game with three matchmaking playlists. What the fuck? Even beyond the irresponsibility of Microsoft and their indescribably poor management of this IP, there is a general incompetence at 343 that needs to be addressed because it's particularly unique even among their first party studios. Say what you want about the Coalition taking over the Gears franchise. I actually really liked Gears of War 4 and 5, 5 in particular. But even when people didn't really like those games, they at least shipped with all of the core feature sets that fans expected from Gears of War. They launched with Horde Mode, they launched with Multiplayer, they launched with Split Screen. And by the way, Gears Tactics was incredible, and Hive Busters, the DLC for Gears 5, is some of the best DLC I've ever seen out of Microsoft's first party, period. Turn 10 and Playground Games have been hitting home run after home run with Forza and Forza Horizon for ages now. Sure, you have examples like Rare, who have stumbled for a very, very long time, but even they hit it out of the park with Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is bigger than Halo Infinite now. Meanwhile, I can't jump into a game of Social Slayer on the most recent Halo game because all of the, all of the social playlists feel sweaty as fuck because the SBMM is insane. If you look on Twitter right now, well, not right now because this video is no doubt late, but if you look on Twitter at the time that I'm recording this, uh, you know, there's a lot of calls for 343 Industries to be removed from the, from the Halo IP. I think there was a hashtag fire343. And while I don't really sign on to that because I don't think it really addresses any of the core problems, I completely understand why people are feeling that way right now. 343 Industries was built from the ground up for the sole purpose of continuing Halo after Bungie moved on to Destiny. Why they named themselves after a villain, I will never know. It would be like if the Coalition named themselves the Locust Horde. Not a trustworthy group of people. But when you do something like that, when you build a studio from the ground up for the sole purpose of shepherding this legacy IP into the future and carrying on that legacy, there is an expectation there that you are there to serve the game as faithfully as possible. When an existing studio with a signature style and history is placed on a, a legacy IP, the expectations are, are a little bit different. The expectation is instead, oh, their signature style mixed with that IP would be super interesting. Machine Games, the developers of the recent Wolfenstein games, making an Indiana Jones game sounds awesome because you know Machine Games and have an idea of what Indiana Jones might look like from them. You know their strengths, you know their weaknesses, you know what, you know what makes them tick. When 343 was put on Halo, they didn't have a history. There was no signature style. There was no prior work with which to glean some information. They did not have the clout to then go changing and, and putting their own spin on shit, but they developed as if they did. They changed Halo's signature art style for no apparent reason. They designed the multiplayer to be more like Call of Duty for no reason. And you don't build a studio from the ground up to do that. And so yeah, if you handed Halo over to Infinity Ward or id Software or Machine Games or whoever, 
you probably wouldn't end up with a game that honored Halo's legacy very well. They don't have experience building weird, quirky vehicle sandboxes. They don't know how to make Halo the perfect, competitively casual hybrid FPS that it is. They probably couldn't even nail something as granular as the physics or sound effects. But as close as 343 has gotten with all of those things, they haven't stuck the landing on that shit either. And it's been 10 years. So when people are saying just give Halo to id or give Halo to somebody else, I kind of get it. Why not at this point? Why not have a weird single player only Halo from id with their signature style and signature aesthetic? Why not have a Halo RPG made by Obsidian with no PvP at all? If the studio created from the ground up to honor Halo's legacy still can't do it, then why not just give it to any old random studio and see what creative spin they can put on it? And let 343 make the ultra competitive sweat fest that they clearly would rather be building free from the evidently lofty expectations of this incredibly storied franchise. Because you know what? I'd probably be a fan. 343 makes great first-person shooters. I think they've only gotten better since Halo 4. I'd love to see what they can do on their own. And yeah, Halo Infinite is the closest they've ever gotten to really capturing that classic Halo vibe. But if, if this delivery is anything to go off, it's just clearly too big of an IP for them. They never stick the landing, and the, honestly, the basic decision-making has me stunned. Honestly, for a second, imagine cramming Halo into a live service model. A model that lives and dies by its ability to deliver new content frequently to its players. And you launch the game without Forge and without working custom games. Tools that would literally allow players to endlessly create new and fun content to satiate the community demand at absolutely no cost to 343 whatsoever. How do you let that happen? Halo Infinite launched as a free-to-play live service game. Uh, more than 20 million players checked it out at launch. That's insane. Now imagine those 20 million people playing and, you know, they were playing PvP, matchmaking, or whatever, and they got a little bored, you know, as, as happens with every game, really. They got a little bored and it's like, oh, okay. And then they delve into the game and then they realize there's this whole other facet to the game that they hadn't even anticipated. Building, creativity, content creation, map design, game modes where you don't even need to shoot a gun, Spider-Man Quidditch with the grapple shot and the oddball, uh, race tracks, infection modes, obstacle courses. Halo 3 and Reach were great games to play matchmaking in, no doubt, but people stuck with them because they were really versatile experiences outside of the competitive framework. Halo was born as a split-screen, party game. It was designed without Xbox Live in mind. It was designed for four players sharing a screen, fucking around with each other on various arena maps. That's what it is. It has an arena shooter identity, and it can be competitive, but that's not the core of what this game is. It is, as one of the original designers of Halo CE confirmed, a party game. So when I was watching 343's update video and they said this, We are a very competitive game. That's our DNA. That's who we are. Right? You go back all the way to the very first Halo, right? Multiplayer. I mean, it is it is a highly competitive game. My heart sank because it is way too far into development for these types of misunderstandings to be so upfront. And by the way, I'm not saying that 343 doesn't care. I know a lot of people at the studio, and they care a great deal. But I really feel like they got the wrong people at the top. A game needs to be fun before it can be competitive. Smash Brothers was not designed to be an eSport. Fortnite was not designed to be ultra competitive. Halo wasn't designed to be an eSport. These games became competitive over time because they had such broad, casual appeal. And players had so much fun playing the game with friends and goofing off that they learned the game intimately and got so good at it that it managed to grow its own competitive scene out of the fun that was had in the casual space. They learned weapon layouts, map layouts, spawn layouts. They learned the exploits and crafted something incredibly cool out of that. In order for Smash Brothers to be competitive, you have to really kind of tweak it. You have to get rid of items. You have to do all these weird things in the settings. Same thing with Halo. Halo's MLG settings aren't even the same as ranked settings. And Fortnite, don't even get me started, Fortnite is one of the biggest games in the world right now, and it is just a complete RNG-riddled clusterfuck. What I remember most from the original Bungie titles from a multiplayer standpoint isn't the time I got 15 kills without dying on Powerhouse or the crazy Capture the Flag run that I did in Halo 2 in like 2008. That's part of it for sure, 
But what I remember most is the goofing off. It's various infection modes on custom maps. It's Speed Halo. It's Mongoose Season. It's Jenga Tower on Standoff. Different this is you. Speed Halo. Yeah, I we don't typically do what this is in a game type in an existing game, but I was so blown away by this thing, and it just goes in an infinite loop, I don't faster know. and faster. I don't know if I've ever heard you laugh more maniacally than when oh, you're playing this game. It's the most fun I've ever had playing a video game, I'm pretty sure. Wow. I, I cannot stop laughing. A solid competitive framework is good and definitely necessary, but it's nothing without the variety that Halo is ostensibly known for. It was a game that you could play to compete in, and a game that you could play to fuck around and goof off in, and that's what set it apart from most of its, you know, highly competitive contemporaries. People weren't making movies in Quake or Unreal Tournament. They were making movies in Halo. You know what this map needs? It needs more sand. More sand? We're surrounded by sand. You know, not, not, not that much, just like two cubic tons. Two cubic tons? You know, just like, no, just like, a, like a little pile over there, like, like two cubic tons. Do you have any idea how much two cubic tons of sand is? You can say what you want, but I mean, that's just my opinion. Let me tell you something, okay? Two cubic tons of sand is Hey, look what I found! <laughs> because it was more than just a first-person shooter. It was, it was a place to go. And right now, Halo Infinite isn't a place to go. And let me just say this, Halo Infinite is not dead. It is likely never truly going to die. This isn't an Anthem situation where you have a terrible business model stapled onto an already unfun video game. This is a live service game. And if any game can come back from the brink, it's definitely one of these. No Man's Sky, Apex Legends, even Destiny took eight years to figure out what the hell they were doing, and now it's one of my favorite games ever. Like, I love playing Destiny 2, and I genuinely enjoy it now. But the key distinction between Halo and Destiny and Apex Legends and all of these other live services is that Halo isn't a new IP. Destiny, Apex, all these others, these were storied developers trying their hand at something new and stumbling along the way before they figured it out eventually. With Halo, there isn't anything to figure out. And that is the frustrating thing. This is an established series with an established loyal fan base that is not shy about expressing what it is they want out of the game. There is simply no mystery as to what people want and expect out of a Halo title at this point. And, you know, with 343 having control of this ship now for over 10 years, what is it that they have to show for it? Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary? That shit was ugly as sin. It is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen, and that was their first, that was the first foray into this series for them. Not great. And then you have Halo 4, which I personally can't stand, but is largely remembered as okay. Halo the Master Chief Collection, which was broken for, what, five, six straight years before it got fixed? Halo 5, which had a story that was so bad it forced them to spiritually reboot the series. Halo Wars 2, which was great, but was the work of a completely different developer under the guiding light of 343. And Halo Infinite, a good but unacceptably incomplete game that seemed to learn absolutely no lessons from either the studio's failures Bungie's successes, or the very public failures of other live service games. I don't want 343 thrown into the fucking wind. I don't think that's a wise decision. But if I fucked up at my job this consistently and for this long, I would not have that job. So while I don't believe in the scorched earth policy that a lot of people are kind of advocating for right now, 343 needs a, needs a big shakeup, and they need it fucking yesterday. Or, hear me out, they could hire me and I'll whip them into shape. I'm probably not allowed within 100 feet of that building with how blunt I have been with them, but, you know, I, I, can, I can work from home. It's okay. I'll do it for free, even. Honestly, I, 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 re I really don't like being this negative, truly. Like, I, I know some 343 devs watch me. I know my videos, when I make them, do get play at the studio. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, you know? I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to do this. I don't think they're this garbage studio that's incapable of making a good game. Halo Infinite is, at its core, so damn good. The problem is how the project and the IP is being managed, both by 343 and by Microsoft. Giving Halo to another studio would uh, probably be kind of neat. In fact, I think it would be kind of cool, at least for side stories. But it would throw away all of the progress that 343 has made up until this point. Especially now that they finally have Joe Staten in a meaningful position back at Halo again, it would be such a waste to just throw them by the wayside. So I'm sure by this point in the video, you're probably asking, Chris, how do they fix it? Give me your wisdom. And this is where I feel like I'm probably going to lose many of you, 
uh, because what I'm going to suggest is probably immensely unorthodox. It's also likely impossible at this point, but if I was at 343 or if I was at Microsoft Game Studios, I would seriously consider something like this. Take a serious look at the lessons to be learned from the broader industry, specifically lessons learned by Square Enix and a little game that you probably have heard of, uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV was an MMO released by Square Enix in 2010 that was so unbelievably bad and so staggeringly damaging to the Final Fantasy brand that they opted to rebuild the game from scratch and re-release it three years later. They did this because they knew that the short-term expense of delivering good on the promise of their most treasured IP was better than the long-term cost of simply moving on with the damage of the IP unaddressed. I do not say this lightly, but if I were at 343, I would probably propose straight up unreleasing this game. Take it away from me, uninstall it from my hard drive, and get cracking. Because this game, in its current state, cannot survive another 10-month season of bare-bones battle pass content and broken feature sets. Awful skill-based matchmaking, desync, broken UI, flimsy networking, 80% of its feature set not functioning. Every minute that this game stays live in its current state is damage done permanently to the Halo brand and the Halo IP. And I say that as someone who would dearly miss outplaying people with that grapple hook every day. I love Halo Infinite as is way more than most people, but even I'm willing to, to part with it to, get, to let them sort this shit out, however long it takes, sincerely. Forge is coming and that looks cool, but at this point with them calling it a Forge beta, I don't even know if I'm all that confident that this thing is going to work. Go away. Work on this thing for however long it is you need, and then re-release it when it's actually done. The definitive Halo Infinite, with working custom games, a working customs browser, working forge, working theater, a file share, split screen co-op, network co-op, fully customizable Spartans, plenty of armor options, stable networking, an insanely robust battle pass, double the number of maps, about that, that, that battle royale mode that certain affinity is no doubt working on, and hell, maybe some new weapons, new vehicles, new equipment, new modes, all of that stuff that you would have unceremoniously drip-fed us for this battle pass. And you know what? Maybe even some new campaign stuff if you're feeling spicy. I know I personally have been waiting for a standalone Arbiter DLC for far too long now. And now that you got Joe Staten with you, the guy who wrote Halo 2 with you, that I mean, come on. You, you're, you're in, you have gold. Make something. Take this time to put all of this into the complete package and make the re-release of Halo Infinite the celebration of the IP that it really should be. One that becomes the success story it deserves to be. And Microsoft, put your money where your mouth is. 343 shouldn't be having to allocate resources. They should have their needs met and then some. Final Fantasy XIV went from being an unmitigated disaster to the most popular Japanese MMO in the world with over 2 million active players and nearly 40 million paid subscriptions. They did that because they knew the value of Final Fantasy as a brand, as an IP to them. And if they can do that shit with a game that straight up sucked, a game whose developers admit that it was borderline unplayable, let's get right down to it. Unless you've got the patience of Job or some kind of masochist, you shouldn't play Final Fantasy XIV. Its problems are so vast that I could spend hours talking about them. The awful interface, the recycled content, the stringent limits on questing, the useless maps, the stupid market ward, these issues and dozens more constantly have you asking that age-old question, what were they thinking? Halo should have no problem turning an already great foundation into a robust package after some much needed time away. Time away from the pressure of keeping the game live and time away from the rabid player base whose disappointment, while justified, cannot be good for team morale. Now that's a bold suggestion and a lot of people might be saying, Chris, that's insane, that's crazy. But I would argue it's no crazier than releasing your flagship IP in the state that it was released in in the first place. Oh, jeez, Chris. Halo isn't their most valuable IP anymore. It's not their flagship anymore. No, Halo isn't as big or ubiquitous as Minecraft, but it is, make no mistake, Halo is still Xbox's flagship. It's on the fucking box that they sold the new console in. 
I'm sorry, it's the flagship. Maybe maybe 343 needs that crazy, huh? Maybe maybe 343 needs that passion, passionate insanity. The successful rebirth of Final Fantasy XIV is proof that history is kind to those who make good on their promises. And with a bold, crazy move like that, I really do feel like Halo could thrive again. Imagine the narrative around that. How amazing would that be? If they really pulled some really unheard of shit and unreleased the game and re-released it as a fucking golden package. I'm sure that won't happen though, because you know, as, as much as I'm sure 343 cares, uh, I bet that's a hard sell to Microsoft. So they'll likely continue to toil away at this game that's, you know, struggling to breathe until one day, somebody that you kind of know will unceremoniously tell you that, oh yeah, that game got good recently. And then you'll be like, oh, good. <laughs> what a whimpering comeback. I have no doubt in my mind that Halo Infinite will one day be a fantastic game. I mean, they turned the Master Chief Collection around and that was like a complete, that was just straight up not even, it, that, that game just didn't even work at all. So yeah, it'll bounce back, but it'll never reach the heights that it could have reached if they just got it right out of the gate. I'm just so tired of waiting for games to get good. I'm so tired of waiting years for a game to become the package that it should have been on day one. But most of all, I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Halo Reach shipped in the fall of 2010, three years after Halo 3, with full campaign co-op, split screen across all modes, full forge, working theater, social playlists, ranked playlists, firefight, custom games, and even a new invasion mode, a full ranking system, full progression systems, full customizations, all fucking running completely flawlessly, ready to go right out of the box. 12 years later, we don't even have a fraction of that nine months after launch. This isn't Bungie stand 343 hater nonsense. This isn't, uh, these aren't unfair expectations. This is just objectively embarrassing. The most disappointing thing about 343's uh, update video was that it wasn't disappointing. It was kind of exactly what I expected. Yeah, that smokescreen looks pretty neat. That spies versus mercs mode seems pretty cool. I love Splinter Cell. That bandit rifle, which is just the DMR, I mean, that, that seems all right. But Halo deserves better than that. And by the way, so does Joe Staten. He shouldn't, he shouldn't be wheeled out in front of a video camera to announce uh, like a disappointing thing just because 343 knows that we won't be as mean to him because we love him. I just feel like that's a really shitty thing to do. In one of my previous videos, I said that, um, you know, I'm sure that I was going to like Halo Infinite, but I wanted to love it. I do like Halo Infinite and I want to love it. And I really feel like I could. I see the potential in this amazing Forge mode. I see what this game is and what it could be if every part of it was working as intended. And I'm sure it'll get there, but first impressions are everything. And they fucked up. And I'm just tired. So maybe we just need some time apart. Maybe, you know, 343, take your game back, work on yourself. Hell, I'll work on myself too. And maybe with enough time and with enough effort put in by both of us, uh, you know, we can come back together and maybe make this thing work. But for right now, I would rather you went away and came back strong. I would rather that than whatever's going on right now, where I have to painfully watch you slowly hobble to the finish line just to, just to get to a state where you're kind of okay. Maybe I'm insane. Maybe that's too drastic of a step, but I don't know, man. If it worked for Final Fantasy, you know, what, you're too good for Final Fantasy? Come on. Anyway, uh, I think it's going to be for me today. I feel like I've said all that I really want to say about this. Follow me on all of these social medias if you want. Uh, I post there pretty often. And real quick before you go, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's stuck around this long. I I've been doing YouTube for 15 years at this point, And, you know, sometimes I can get a little lost mentally uh, about what it is I should be doing on this platform, uh, whether I belong on it or not, where my place is, what I should be doing. Um, where I belong and just like all these other existential headaches. So, you know, I know that can be frustrating from an audience perspective, uh, but your support really does mean the world to me. And uh, it really does keep me as grounded and as sane as, as, it, could, as it can. And I am, uh, I am never not grateful for it. And I think that's it. Uh, I love you. Be careful, be good and behave. Uh, I'll catch you in hell. Hey, wow, I'm so glad you enjoyed uh, my video. If you've made it this far, wow, holy cow. Uh, just to fill you guys in, little addendum, you guys don't, the, the main video's over.
you guys can you guys can leave. But this video is very very late. I you, I expected this video to be like a week late. I didn't expect it to be several weeks late. Uh, I had a whole ordeal with my internet company Spectrum, and they just totally fucked me over. I was like my internet was cutting out like forty times a day. It literally would it it would literally interrupt every time I tried to upload this video. And I had like this ma I couldn't stream. I couldn't do anything. So if you're wondering why this video is so late, that's why. Um, <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be this way. Uh, but we're all back. Uh, we're we're up. We're back up and running now. I'm str I'm back streaming on on Twitch. We're there kind of almost every day at this point now that my internet works. Uh, sorry that this video is late again. Again, we we expect things to be late over here on the Chris Reagan channel. I'm I'm a notoriously late person, but this was uh, uncharacteristically late for matters that were completely out of, out of my control. Uh, but there are videos uh, incoming very soon. Uh, apologies again for the bullshit. Uh, I'll catch you.